function y equals 240 plus 20t. What does t stand for? So v is a context of the problem. Yeah, Nildi? I'm sorry. Um, t stands for the years. T stands for the years. It does. It stands for time. It stands for how many years? One. Always one. Zero. zero. It stands for always zero years? No, it stands for like one. It stands for zero through ten. Zero through ten. But what does like seven mean? How many years has like, passed since 1980? Very good. So T is the number of years since. 1980, and Hildier has already told us that t is somewhere between 0 and 10? Yes. Why is that? Um, because it starts at 1980 and goes to 1990. There you go, that's 10 years. Okay. Um, what does y stand for? Now we get the idea. We graph something where t is like x, like t, and y stands for the enrollment, something like that. Because we're going to have positive years and positive enrollments, so usually it's negative enrollment. Okay? So we'll go in the first quadrant: zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Ten years from 1980 would be 1990. All right. Um, to graph it. What about this equation is going to help us graph the line? set the scale of this axis. If we put 240 right here, is that a good idea? Is it not? What would make it a bad idea? Katie? When we talk about negative enrollment, we have negative people going to school. Maybe they have bad attitudes. Yeah? You have to go up by 240? You go up by 240? Yeah. Oh, like every mark would be 240? Would that be a necessarily bad thing? Maybe, depending on what you're doing. Depending on what you're doing, that's true. Depend, it depends on the problem. What does it depend on exactly? to 440, right? If you plug in 10 right there, which is the last year that this model, uh, this equation can model this, this scenario, 
If you plug 10 in, we'll add 200. 200 plus 240 is 440. Okay, so maybe if we did uh, 240 here, and this would be 480. Okay, and 440 is, is in there. That's a little better, a little easier to see. Okay, so uh, Katie told us that the y intercept was 240. And uh, what did you say, Dawson? It goes up? It goes up by 20 every year. That's the slope, isn't it? It goes up 20 and over 1. So let's see. This is 240. That's 120. That's uh, 60. And that's so each of you guys would be about 20. Up 20 and over one year. Up 20 and over one year. Or probably to give us a better idea, we'll go all the way out to 10 years and go up to 440. Uh, so 440. Try to make a straight line. So simply slope intercept form. Slope is 20 over 1, up 20 over 1. 20 students every one year. Uh, the y-intercept is 240. Uh, there you go. Or you could just put in uh, 0, put in 10, find the two y-values, and connect those two. Just graph in a line. So we need two, line, two points to graph a line. All we need. What's the, this, this is not, good, not what it asks, but what's the domain of this function? Between zero and ten, that's the domain, and the range, as you already said, anything between two forty and four forty. Years go from zero years since nineteen eighty to ten years since nineteen eighty, and the normal goes from two forty to four eighty, four forty. Next question. Four. Four. I can get it. Okay, so the question is, which one of these points is on this graph? How can we find that out? Um, you can. I wouldn't say you have to. But we can. Um, what else does it say to? Okay, but we can. Uh, to do that, we get y by itself. So what's step, some step one, we get y by itself. So we subtract 2x from both sides. Try 2x from both sides. Perfect. There's y, there's y equals negative 2x plus 3. Now you got to get rid of that negative 2 thirds. Divide by 2 thirds. Divide by negative 2 thirds. Okay. Divided by a fraction, it's kind of nasty. What do we do? What can we do instead of dividing by negative 2 thirds? Multiple, uh, multiple, uh, multiply by 3 over negative 3. Okay. And so we get y over here. We'll distribute this negative 3 half. So negative 3 halves times negative 2 is 3. X. And now we get negative 9 half. Okay, so now it's in y intercept for slope intercept form. Now what do we do since it's that way? Connor? We find the y-intercept by putting 0 and 3. The y-intercept is what? Negative 9 over 3. Negative 9 
negative nine over two is y intercept. Okay. How is it telling us which one of these goes on that line? Um, we're not trying to graph the line. We're trying to see if this point is on the line. We're thinking to graph the line and then see which, if it goes through one of those points. Okay. You can see that. So the y intercept is negative nine halves. Two, four, six, eight, nine halves. Which one does it go through? Nine halves three or three halves comma twenty? as far out, like, somewhere like here. Yeah, like up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it looks like it goes through, let's see, one, two, three, four, five halves, three. Just looks like it? Okay. Three halves, well, there's three halves. That's three, what point is this on the line? Where is this point? is right there, two halves is one. 1.5 1. is how many halves? Three halves, three halves, comma, comma zero, not comma 20. choices were uh, 5 halves comma 3 and 4 7. Um, hard to tell which one it is on that line so you just drew it by hand. How do we just draw them? Try them. Try them. How do we try them? See what, how that might not be the, the most accurate way to do it because it relies on my graph, which yeah. is drawn by hand, and maybe my hand was shaky because I had too much coffee or something, and then I draw the points that might fall on the line they're supposed to. Yeah. Okay. Bailey? You can plug in the numbers. Like, yeah. for 5 over 2, you plug that in for x, and mm -hmm. you can plug that in for y, Yeah, so you can plug it into here, you can plug it into there, whichever, plug that x and that y in and see if you get a, a true equation, a true statement. Um, remember that a graph, all a graph is, is what? What is a graph? What's the definition of what a graph is? It defines its existence. picture of all the solutions. That means that this line really is just an infinite number of points, right? And all those points have two things to them, an x and a y. So if I pick a point off the line, then what do I know about that point? There's an x and a y to that point. As be a solution, meaning that the x and the y, when you plug that x and that y, whatever they are, the x and the y of that point into the equation, it's got to solve the equation, it's got to make the equation true. Whatever those points are. So if this is a point on the line, 
all that means is this, this x and this y would have to work in this equation. So we plug it in, find out this doesn't work. If we plug this one in, plug it into here. 2 times 5 halves minus 2 thirds times 3 equals 3. 2's cancel, you get 5. 3's cancel, you get 2. That is equal to 3. So this one must be on the line. ask what the range of this function is. It is a function. It's just a, a thing you have uh, input and output. You go to this input, you get this output. Uh, there's only one output for every input. Function. Uh, the range. What's the definition of the range? All of the outputs. Yeah? You got it. All the outputs. Every output that this function has together and you express them in some way, and that's the range, okay? So what are all of the outputs that this function gives? Anything between 20 and 60. This is the output that you can get. You can get a 20 out of this. You go to 6, you get 20. Uh, you can't get 10. You look at 10, there's, there's no 10. Right? But 20, 30, anything between 20 and 30, all the way up to 60. So you say y, we greater than or equal to 20, and less than or equal to 60. Anything in between there, it falls in the range. Next question. So negative 3 halves minus 1 is negative 5 halves. Um, no, sorry, this is a positive. Negative 10 negative is positive. So negative 1 plus 3 halves is 1 half. So we have three fourths minus one. So negative one fourth. Come back here. We get the idea so far. From zero, I get negative one fourth. Or sorry, negative one. Uh, negative seven fourths for two. 
five have four. Then it says to graph the function. Two ways we could graph this function that we could both make the same graph. I guess there's limitless ways we could graph it, but there's two obvious ways in this scenario. What's one way we can graph the line? Rise over run. Hmm? Do we have a rise over run? Mm -hmm. What's the rise over run? Why? Why is the rise over run? With the, this is in the form y equals mx plus b. So where do we find the rise over run? M. M. What's m? Negative 3 eighths. Negative 3 eighths. Okay, so we have the slope, meaning we can go down 3 and over 8. That would do it for us, down 3 to the right 8. But we need to start somewhere. 0. Why 0? Because it's in the center and it's, I don't know, you told us it was 0. At negative 1, our y intercept is negative one. So we could have plotted all these points and then connected them all, and that would have made the line as well. Next question. Um, can you, we have a refresher on number 18. 18. You just find the slope intercept, but I don't know if I did it right. I think I did. Okay. All right. So getting this equation. In slope intercept form means getting y by itself. You have y by itself on one side of the equation equals mx plus b. That's slope intercept form. What would you do first to get y by itself? Really? Uh, subtract 5x. Subtract 5x, okay. So 5x minus 5x is 0. 0 minus 5x is 5x. Even? Add seven. Add seven, good idea. Divide by negative two. Remember, you gotta distribute the division to everything, so these two things. So you get positive five halves, because negative divided by negative is positive, minus seven halves. That's it, now y is by itself. You got a number times x, you got your constant. Four, positive two. 
here, how far do you rise, and then how far do you run? Okay. We can just look at it. How far does it go from here to there? also an example of a direct variation equation, and the graphs of direct variation equations will always go through the origin. But for the very reason that they're y intercepted. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if there's not a recess plus zero then, are you always going to go to the right one? Right one then? It's not because of the plus zero, it's because this is the slope. Okay. And the slope is, if, if it's just negative two, you can always just write any number over one. Do you want to look at it as a fraction? Oh, okay. okay. Tiger? 15. Okay, it says to graph this by finding its x and y intercepts. What is an x intercept? What's that, Derek? Uh, what did you say? X 
Yeah. Where's y0, right? Where's y0? All along this axis, the x-axis. Every point on this x-axis has a y value of 0. And that's what an x-intercept means. It means where the graph crosses the x-axis. If the graph crosses the x-axis, then that point, whatever it is, is going to have a y of 0. So we put a 0 in for y. 3x equals negative 6, x equals negative 2. So when x is negative 2, y is 0. So there is our x-intercept for the y-intercept. We put a 0 in for x. So when x is 0, y is 3. And we have the two points we need. We only need two points to graph a line. There we go. by itself, almost, and there's like one more thing to do. It's positive. So I like it. Divide by two. Divide by two. So we could just kind of abandon this one if we wanted to. I mean, it's perfectly good, and we can do it. I would say instead of adding 2y at this one, I would subtract one third x. But it's okay to just scrap it, say, forget that. Let's go to this one. Divide this by two. Divide by two is the same as multiplying by what? Half. So on somebody say it. Take it. I don't do that because it's easier to multiply a fraction by a fraction than to divide a fraction by a fraction. Or divide even a fraction by a number. So we'll distribute this. One half times one third is one sixth. X. One half times two thirds is two sixths. Equals y. One sixth x plus one third. Y. We can write it with the y on the left side, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. But there it is, mx plus p. You ready? Yeah. 